I want to create visually compelling images that have embedded meanings and questions that provoke thought, wonder, confrontation, and visual sensations. In this way, the work carries impact into viewers' minds, and they learn of issues through the unusual juxtapositions and associations that are all possible meanings. The messages are subversive in a way, hidden and seemingly abstract, but revealed through looking, living with, and thinking deeply. Considering your body of work over time and across mediums, can you describe overarching themes and ideas that have persisted throughout your work? My works deal with landscape in a very simple way, but it expands into um, broader ideas about how land is used, how did the earth come about, how do things develop and evolve, uh, which is about transitions and basically, you know, the big questions about life and death and how did it all happen? And I think of that when I look at the landscape, actually, coming from uh, being in Nebraska and living in the countryside for over 30 years, uh, always looking at those developments and changes and uh, annual seasonal developments always made me think about, well, how did this happen? <laughs> how are we here? So I think those are the big, big issues. And it might be symbolized by a tree, uh, water, uh, ephemeral ideas about weathering. And uh, then it goes into even cosmic ideas about planets and the solar system and black holes and the Big Bang and all that creation idea. I always think there's the idea about space mm -hmm. that uh, here in Nebraska, yes, I don't have mountains to view, but I understand the distance that it takes for the air and the wind to come from the mountains and how we're affected by all these systems that are so big and far away, but I can conceptualize about that. So I'm very small in this space, but it, it expands out into these bigger ideas of connecting to the whole system. So I actually think there's ecological messages, conservation messages in my work, and I try to bring that out sometimes in the titles. In your artist statement, I read that you're really interested in erosion and how mountains mm -hmm. form and this whole concept of how time changes our natural environment. Could you explain a little bit deeper that meaning? Right. The geologic time has always been interesting because of uh, growing up as a, a rock hound family. We were interested in um, the phenomena of agates and the fortification patterns inside those. How did those develop over thousands of years of um, minerals eroding and crystallizing and turning into something special. We would take family vacations and dig for fossil fish mm -hmm. and uh, find uh, Lake Superior agates and petrified wood and fossils of uh, crinoids and uh, horned coral and all of those things right away. It tells you of this um, different eras of the earth. The geologic time is really interesting, but you can even look on a miniature scale and see um, tiny canyons eroding in a mud puddle and uh, the evaporation of the water that ends up leaving stains and patterns. I just think it's such an interesting awareness of our own personal time and then the bigger time in the in, um, generations and eons and how did a mountain weather away through the wind, through erosion, through grain of sand by grain of sand. So um, all of those ideas are really what I'm meaning about time. 
actually, I think in my prints, I do lots of little details that in my mind, I call them gems. It's like a glint of a color. It's a, a accent. It's a faceted bright spot that is meant to attract your eye, just like the uh, our beautiful jewelry can do. And they work for the same idea of rising up and across the surface of the print and uh, other colors settle down in. So um, I'm doing with ink kind of the same geological actions and expect that same kind of magical result of, of finding something very special. Why was your experience at Littleton Studios important to you and what stayed with you from your time there? Well, I felt that I was very lucky and honored to be invited the very first time to go and make prints at the Littleton Studios. Uh, Judy O'Rourke was the master printer and she invited me to come and it was a challenge. <laughs> what am I gonna do in this process? Actually, I think I had seen some vitriograph prints before I went. And um, so I'm sure it was the first experimental stage that Harvey Littleton had started and with the artists that he had invited. And I thought, well, he, he hadn't invited a printmaker. Everybody, the printmakers all said, well, why do we need to make prints off of glass? We already have perfectly adequate materials, um, copper plates, litho stones, um, wood blocks, why glass? So I wanted to see what that would mean. The process of making vitreographs uh, did make me consider how layers work and it solidified a way of working that looked very spontaneous. For me, that was probably the most uh, attractive facet of making the vitreograph prints because you paint on the glass with a, the white ink to act as a stop out. And that painting action and then sandblasting it ended up solidifying something that usually is very fluid and loose. And here it became a matrix that was set in a plate that you could repeat and it captured all that fluidity. So I felt like I was um, able to make a matrix of a monoprint, <laughs> a monotype where you're painting on this fluid surface. Usually those are one of a kind, but here it made it into a matrix that's repeatable. And that fluidity, uh, it's influenced me for watercolor painting or uh, the layers that I still make in my woodcut. Um, I try to sometimes, uh, I, I practice with brushes and make drippy things that I carve in a wood block and make into a solidified matrix for repeat printing. So it, it brings up those ideas of how do you capture mark making? And this method was really important about that. I also think the way the color sits on the levels of glass, you know, these were all made from multiple plates and you could see through the plates and see how your colors looked and the color stayed clean and didn't get oxidized from metal plates. And, and I liked that about uh, making the vitreographs. So there were some, some of those technical things, of course, influence the aesthetic look of the print. They have a luminosity. Is that from the glass? Is that from the ink? It's a, a deliberate quality that I wanted to happen. And they still kind of look like monoprints, <laughs> a looseness to them, where my woodcut always has more sharp edges which is the nature of the mark making in that process. What do you value in Littleton's printmaking innovation? And how do you respond to the collaborative research he promoted by inviting different artists to his studio to explore this new methodology? What a ideal kind of legacy to 
bring the glass and the printmaking together, a very unusual combination. In a way, I think I'm trying to mirror that in my studio here, Constellation Studios. It doesn't have the glass making. Maybe I'll never do vitriograph again, but I have made a studio where I can invite artists to come as an artist in residence or teach workshops here. And I can engage with people in a different way than I did at the university. I have always thought that the greatest role of being a teacher is that I'm actually a collaborator. Collaboration is about sharing and printmaking has always been in an open space where you are compelled to share because you have shared equipment. You have to share making mistakes in front of other people. Uh, you don't even have to talk, but you can learn by watching and being around other people in the same boat, all struggling and, and accomplishing things and, and growing. So I've always thought that's the collaboration that is should be more celebrated. It's wonderful to work with other people. That's the real part about it and have the opportunity to be vulnerable so that other people can see what you're doing and you make mistakes, but you end up making the third thing. Here's something from that person, here's something from that, and something new happens right out there that neither of you could have done alone. So uh, that's what I love to have happen. So those are what I'm, I, I was interested in, in exploring those differences. I've traveled a lot throughout my career. And it started with some of my first trips in my 30s to go to all these different beautiful places, exotic places around the world and have opportunities to teach or do a residency or have an exhibition. And I think right before I made some of the prints, I had been to Hawaii and Iceland and uh, Greece all in the same year. And they all had a volcano, <laughs> each of those places. So I was on volcanoes and that idea really fits this questioning of how the environment is. How did those places come about? Not like a travel log. My prints don't look like you could identify locations. I can maybe, but I think the color of a place, uh, concepts about the place do enter into my vocabulary and it becomes interesting to have the experience of those other places and then compare it with home. That mental distance and uh, connection is something that I'm even using here in the name of my studio, Constellation Studios. It's the concept of these network across time and space. After your trip to Littleton, what work came about? I did two series. Uh, the first one was called Exotica. Uh, Exotica was a series of small prints uh, about 12 by 12 inches, and there were nine of them in a series. Uh, those were like an outpouring of all these techniques that I had learned and that I wanted to recreate and, and expand on and do it in my own thing. All of them dealt with kind of this travel between Iceland and, and uh, I don't know, Hawaii or something. There were waterfalls and and palm trees bending and um, lava flows. Really a beautiful, beautiful series. And then the other series was called Landmarks. That one was sparked because I had an invitation to work with the master printer, Kathy Caraccio in New York. She received a grant to publish the work of an artist and she invited me to be the artist. And she wanted to come to Nebraska so that she could do the vitriograph with me because she knew that I had played with it. So she wanted to see what's this vitriograph about. I used um, 
metaphors about the landscape uh, from Iceland, piles of rocks and uh, weathered fences, and I think what else was in it? Um, stunted trees and uh, kind of um, fences that are holding uh, something inside like a shrine. This is a phenomenal gift that you're giving to us. So I wanted to thank you again for spending your time. Thank you for making the effort to make this facet of printmaking to be uh, known and collected in, in an institution. I think it's really important.